These gravity ore docks built by the Burlington Northern Railway are the longest and largest ever constructed. Now abandoned, they stand in silent testimony to a bygone era. Each extends out nearly a half mile from shore, engineering marvels of concrete and steel that once employed upward of 500 dock workers. During their lifetime, more than a billion tons of iron ore were shuttled by rail from the iron range a hundred miles distant and into the holds of awaiting Great Lakes freighters. And on the morning of November 9, 1975, 26,116 long tons of that taconite ore was dispensed from the shuttles of dock number one, seen here on the right, through the open hatches of the SS Edmund Fitzgerald, her final cargo. That afternoon at 2.30, the Fitzgerald sailed out through this channel onto the capricious waters of Lake Superior and into maritime history. A gathering storm out over the Great Plains, generating sustained winds of 58 knots and producing 30-foot seas, would soon come bearing down on the Fitzgerald, and she, her cargo, and crew of 29 men would come to their final resting place in the icy waters 535 feet below and 400 miles from where she began her fateful journey. The story of that fateful trip is well known to Maritimers and to Laker enthusiasts and to the general public, preserved for posterity in the haunting melody and powerful lyrics of Gordon Lightfoot's epic folk song, The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Every year on November 10th, a public memorial honoring the Fitzgerald and her crew is held at Split Rock Lighthouse State Park near Beaver Bay, Minnesota. The brief solemn ceremony takes place at sunset with the tradition known as the muster of the last watch and the reading aloud of the 29 names and titles of each crew member answered in turn by the tolling of a ship's bell. The evening concludes with the temporary lighting of the iconic lighthouse's decommissioned beacon, whose venerated beam reaches like an outstretched hand of hope and salvation 22 miles across the navigable waters of Lake Superior. For the last several years I've wanted to attend this event, and I made a last-minute decision to make the long, eight-hour drive northward in hopes of capturing, in a single photograph, some of the emotional weight that I've been carrying with me for nearly five decades surrounding my emotional relationship with the Edmund Fitzgerald, and to convey in that photo just how meaningful this historic event has been to me. And in the end, the entire four-day experience proved to be a very rich, rewarding, and cathartic journey. So I made it to the Split Rock Lighthouse and uh, inquiring about tonight's ceremony. You can see the lighthouse here in the background. I just spoke to the manager of the event here tonight. Tracked her down through one of the guys who works here uh, for the lighting of the lantern and also try to take in the ceremony, which is only going to last about 15 minutes before they turn on the light. So I asked the woman, how many are they expecting? She said, 1,400 advanced ticket sales. I said, how are you going to get them all in the lighthouse? I really came out here early to scout and see where the best locations are to shoot from for tonight. Well, that's what I'm going to spend the day here doing. Um, they said, you better be here no later than 2 o'clock or you're not going to find a parking spot because parking is very, very limited here. So I think I'm here for the day. I'm here for the duration. It is now about 11 o'clock, so we have five hours to kill. I did pack a lunch.
this is the location right here Pebble Beach I'm wondering now if maybe I can get on top of those rocks there Might be a trail Let's see if there's a path to get a little bit of a different angle although close to the water here is nice this is why I scout early so I'm not rushing around looking for a composition got all kinds of time and I'm giving second thought to, uh, to actually recording the ceremony because uh, I don't know if you knew this about me or not but I really don't like being in big crowds of people uh, one um, I don't have the patience and two um, it does all kinds of strange things to my balance having so much movement so close to me that it, it really screws up my balance and makes me very uneasy so at any rate uh, you can you might be able to see there's a couple of little kind of evergreens on the end of that point there right about there ish and uh, give that some separation from the lighthouse so I think I'm going to forego all the crowds and just stay down here. I don't imagine I'm going to be the only photographer. I imagine there's going to be several photographers down here. This is kind of a prime shooting location. I'm just going to come early, stake out my claim right here on this rock. I think we found our, our shot for tonight. Then afterward, uh, when the crowds thin out after the ceremony, maybe an hour or so after, I'll drive back up and see if I can't get in the tower to get a shot of the frontal lens. All it up. We'll see. But this, this is the main shot that I'm going for. So if they turn on the light at around 445, the sun goes down, I think, at 432. So I can still have some, quite a bit of light on the subject. And it just won't be silhouetted. All right. Let's see what else we can find here. There have to be other compositions up here somewhere. I like it up here. This is also an excellent location, an easy location too, because it's nice and level. Don't have to move around on the jagged rocks. And uh, I don't know if you can see with this tiny little lens, wide angle lens here from this, but you can see that spit of land coming out as we did over there, about, I don't know, 75 feet over that way. But you can also see where the cliff face fell into the water at the foot of the lighthouse and you can see more of the light keeping station and all of that and that'll probably be illuminated tonight so this is another good location so i have two and maybe one down from by the water's edge so yeah now it's time for some lunch there are probably, just on this pebble beach here and the next beach over, probably about 100 people, most of whom are photographers. I'm in position here for my first of hopefully three different <laughs> compositions. <clears throat> we still have an hour and 45 minutes to go before they light the lighthouse. So... This has really grown to be quite the bucket list item. I've been out here since noon, <laughs> so I've been here for three hours already at this location. And there are dozens of photographers here now. Um, you might even be able to hear some behind me here to the right, but I got, well, I think it's the prime location. Uh, it's certainly the composition that I wanted. So hopefully I'll be able to move over later those other two locations that I had scouted are full of photographers now. I don't like recording in front of people. They, uh, just the other side of this pine tree here. So, um, but what I set up here is something I've never used before. I have a, um, a charger here. 
uh, in this bag and it's connected to a heater, a lens heater. So it'll keep dew from forming on the uh, front element of the lens and keep it from frosting up. We're right around freezing right now. We've been having intermittent sleet and snow. Uh, and I can look out over the lake here and see lots of snow out over the lake. So, yeah, but let me just show you my composition here real quick. I have no idea what my settings are going to be because um, they're going to light the light at around quarter to five, and the sun sets at 4.32 today. So it won't be completely dark. It'll be dusky, but we'll lose a lot of the detail in the trees and the rocks so i broke this down into thirds and on the left third there you can see the lighthouse and i chose this location here because you see those two evergreen trees down at the bottom of the bluff there uh right where that person is walking more photographers and i think that ties that nicely together you can see the lake horizon line there plenty of sky I'm hoping we get a little bit of atmosphere so we can see a beam of light shooting up from uh, the lighthouse across the lake. And yeah, a little bit of reflection in the water maybe. All right, so I got my heater on. It's a long wait. I mean, <laughs> essentially a five hour wait for one shot. And I drove more than 400 miles. As daylight slowly faded, a damp chill blanketed the bluffs and beaches as excitement and the din from the burgeoning crowds grew. When the beacon was lit, the woods became silent. I softly talked through my rapidly changing exposure settings as the darkness increased, only to realize on my return that I had run out of battery on my wireless receiver and recorded no audio. But the night did not disappoint and I was able to capture the image I had imagined, and a second, for good measure. The distance to the lighthouse from my position was more than a half mile. 3,060 feet to be exact, which fell beyond the hyperfocal distance of my 70 to 200 millimeter f4 telephoto lens, set roughly to 135 millimeters. It was the right lens choice in that I was able to capture a panoramic view of the scene more than 800 feet wide in a single image, with all the elements of the foreground, midground, and background in focus, while making any framing adjustments to the composition on the fly simply by adjusting the zoom without having to refocus, something that would be difficult to do in the dark. I found that the optimum settings were to leave my aperture wide open at 4.0, set my ISO to 1600, and a shutter speed of 4 seconds. The greatest challenge came in syncing my shutter to the 10 second rotation of the light to catch the position of the beam just at the right moment. I had to calculate an additional 2 seconds for my camera shutter timer that I set to eliminate any vibration that might occur. This took some practice, but I eventually got my timing down and was rewarded with the shot I had envisioned. This second image is much like the first, only that I included a handful of photographers on the shore in the midground. In the previous image, I removed them using the spot removal tool in Photoshop. While not as haunting of an image as the first, this does tell the story of the night. I also waited for the beam to flash directly at the camera to create that starburst effect. Which of these two images is your favorite? You can let me know which one you prefer in the comments below. I always like hearing from you.
Puh. <sighs> what a day. What a day. I was like one of the first people here this morning. Got here around 10.30, 10.40. And I'm one of the last to leave here now at five after seven. They're just getting ready to turn out the light for the tower, but holy cow, 1,600 people. Uh, I came back up from Pebble Beach where I was to um, to the lighthouse proper. And of course I bought a, I bought my admission earlier on today. I got my, my, my little band there. So I just walked right through and all the crowds up here had gone. And I didn't think I was going to be able to get up into the tower, but I did. I was the last person up into the tower. Uh, they were supposed to close at 6. I got up there about 6.25. And they let me in only because the guy who was kind of running the show there at the tower, Ed, I took his photo. This is Ed. Doesn't he look like a lighthouse keeper? Uh, Ed remembered me from this morning. I had a nice conversation with him, so he let me come in. And, uh, boy, I'll tell you, I'm looking around the parking lot, and I see one car other than me. <laughs> so, and they're just fixing to leave here. There they go. That about does it for me from the Split Rock Lighthouse and the commemoration of the sinking of the Edmund Fitzgerald, the 48th anniversary of the sinking of the Fitzgerald. I'll bid you good night. I've been here uh, eight and a half hours. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you down the road. Thanks for watching.